becomes negative 10. I have a crazy bias against subtraction, so I change it to plus the negative instead. And negative 10 and a negative 3 team up to make a bigger bad guy. Because that was multiplication, which we're, we're re-practicing today from yesterday's worksheet. Um, real quick, before we take any more homework questions, and I'll go back to the answer key, your homework is now a competition. And no, it is not right versus wrong. It is just, did you do it? Right? Did you do it and put in the effort that was needed when it was supposed to be? And the class that currently has the trophy is 3D. They had 92% of their class turn in their work on time. Doesn't mean it was right, but it does mean they checked it and they like then they turned it in. Now, 1A, almost, like they were at like 80%. They were pretty darn close. If 1A had won, the trophy counts for both of the math seven classes. Because your team is not just the people in this room. Your team for Math 7 is 1A and 1B. It's everybody in Math 7, because you could do your homework with either classes. You could revise your mastery with either of the classes, right? Like, But your homework isn't the same as Block 3, right? They're doing totally different okay. stuff. So if 1A had won, Math 7 Block 1 would have one victory. Here's how this is going to work. At the end of this week, or like next week, I will take off 3D and put it up here to keep track of who has how many victories, right? Greens will count for uh, block three, and this blue, just because the post-its I have, blue will be for math seven. So if you guys, or 1A, have the highest class percentage, you'll bring home the trophy next week, and at the end of the quarter, at the end of quarter two, there will be some kind of reward for the block that did the best. And this is just homework completion. Right? It's not right versus wrong. It's did you do what you were supposed to do when you were supposed to do it? So if you're having a hard time getting your work done at home, come to math lunch. Right? If you're having a hard time getting through your problems, like in AO or extensions, you can actually get your butt up and walk over here and talk to me. Because even if you're using homework help, I bet I can help you a bit more than homework help can. Because I'm like a human who like sort of knows you. And the computer doesn't really know you. But like I'm starting to really get to know who you guys are as mathematicians, because you're all mathematicians in here. And like I know what your weaknesses are, and I know what your strengths are, and we can play to those. Questions on the homework before we move on and finish up yesterday's lesson. Oh, wait, I have a question. Can I draw into a thing? I think I need it. So, ah, so if you were to, do you want to, like, try to explain what happens in B? 46 feet, yeah. Sure, like, do you want to just talk through what I have up here? Okay, so, wait, yeah. So, if, sit down, Charlotte. <laughs> if you started with negative five, I really do appreciate like your, your willingness to help, but I want to make sure this makes sense. If we started with negative five, forget about what I drew in purple. There's negative five. If I want to remove seven negatives, I can't because there aren't seven negatives. So to be able to remove extra negatives, I bring in extra zeros. So I bring in two zeros because that's a zero, that's a zero. Now I'm able to remove seven negatives. What am I left with? Two extra positives. So what this really does is like negative five plus seven, and that equals positive two. Well, I know, because you were going to try to talk through somebody else's work, which is kind of complicated, like kind of confusing to do. Does that make a bit more sense, Sammy? So like C 
was if you started with negative five and brought in seven positives. Well, if I started with negative five and brought in seven positives, cancel, 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 two extra. So C and D are actually the same thing, except this one brings in seven good guys. This one takes away seven bad guys, but effectively it does the same thing. All right, we need to get on to the lesson. So if you have more questions, you are welcome at Math Lunch, just like everyone is. All right, so go ahead and put 322 away because it does not need turned in. We do not turn on our work, but 323, we need out. We need out 323 from yesterday. You had, hey guys, you might have this on your paper. But we had negative 10 minus negative 2 minus negative 2 from yesterday's lesson. Minus negative 2. Everyone good. We're on 3, 2, 3 now. The worksheet you had from yesterday. On the front. I'll show it to you, but my answer is already written there. No, 3, 2, 3. 3, 2, 3. Three, two, three. We're here in problem E. But be careful, that negative 10, I even forgot about that when I solved it like earlier in the other class. So guys, we're taking away a negative, which we yesterday said every time we take away a negative, that actually does what? Make it a positive. Makes it a po it's a good thing, right? That actually makes it a positive. But if I rewrite this, and I would ask that you rewrite this with me, how many times do I take away negative two? Three times. Three times I take away negative two. I know, but we're gonna do this more today, right? So we're reviewing what we did yesterday to lead us there. But Hudson's crazy and he has a bias against subtraction. So he's going to change it to addition of a negative. And what happens when we have a negative times a negative? It's a positive. It's a positive. And if we forget, look over there at the posters above the dry erase board. Multiply and divide, head down the green route. Same signs. And that's talking about with two numbers. Right? If we have two numbers, same sign, positive. So this is negative 10 plus positive six, and what did we get yesterday? Negative four. Negative four. So what this reminds us is if we only have a single negative, it stays negative. If you didn't do the, did we do like the bottom three here? So the last three, well this should work then, if we did them. Mason, what about two times negative seven? Yeah, the first thing you should be asking yourself is positive or negative. Then just do the math with the numbers. Mila, everyone move. Mila, what about negative 2 times negative 7? Yeah, positive 14 because a negative times a negative. And Charlotte, what about negative 2 times 7? Yeah, negative 14. Questions on those? just showing that the two negatives make it into the positive, the two negatives. Now be careful with multiplication, right? Because if we were adding two negatives, you get a bigger negative. Now, division is the, oh crap, I'm ahead of myself. So why does negative one times negative one equal zero? Like your classmate is asking, so Marcy is asking Dario, and Dara's like, well, you see here, it just does. Marcy's like, yeah, no, that doesn't, that's not an answer. What happens if we have a number? And guys, go ahead and on your graph paper. Like, grab your graph paper. Oh, it's not out? That was inconvenient. Yeah, yeah, I, I, love, I love those. You've proven me wrong. I love it. Seriously, I love those that are like holding it up and they're like, ha, ha, got it. 
right? Like, if I give you the number four, could I also say it's two times two? Yes. Yes, right? Because two times two is four. I could also say it's two squared. I could also say it's two plus two. But I could say four in a bunch of different ways. That is a number. That number, what we can figure out immediately, is a negative number. But if we're going to break a negative number into two other numbers, I can't do negative 45 over negative 3 because that would be positive. Right, so I can't do, so only one of those numbers is going to get the negative. So how we have it written is this, but that's the same as this. And that's actually the same as that. It doesn't make a difference where we put the negative. Unless we're trying to tell like a real story, which is kind of hard with negative numbers. Because it kind of is like going back in time or, or death. <laughs> Essentially, we can. All it does is in the end, in the end, it makes our result negative because there's only a negative involved. Does that make a bit more sense? I know, negatives are weird. They really are. Yes? So, you gotta stop the habit of just using that answer you just called me. I'm going to get on the call on you and you already asked that. You, you get two minutes and five seconds. In order, numerator, denominator, always in order. So as we write the fraction going top down, it's left to right, it's top down. Right? So like we read left to right, top to bottom, if it's left to right, we go, so practice, right? Let's practice a few more of these. Try B on your own. Well, B and or C. Like, try those on your graph paper. If you're sneakily doing your homework, just switch back to this for a moment. This is not on a worksheet. This is just on your graph paper. I know I'm annoying. This is not on your worksheet. I can't put everything on worksheets. We're doing B and C. We're doing B and C. I'll write it up there bigger so I know it's a little, little small. When you're dividing two negatives, is it still going to be positive? What's up, Dad? saying anything is always. Unless you have math. <laughs> Gauge in B when you first thought, like the first thought you have is, is it positive or negative? Why? Yeah, gauge identified. I got two negatives. That means our answer is going to come out to be positive. And then you want to take us home, positive what? Positive 816, yep, positive 4. Okay, you lost. you got to say more than that. So guys, look up here. If I have a debt of $32, If I have a debt of $32 that I accrued, which means like I took on, through debts of, debts of $8 each, how many debts did I take on? Four. I took on four debts of, because if I turn this around and I say, what is four times negative eight? four debts of negative 8, we get negative 32. Negative 32 divided by negative 8, positive 4. A giant debt of 32 split up by debts of 8. How many debts did I take on? A positive amount of debts. Yeah, this, that definitely works on B, but then in C, that's a little tricky to think through because, like, how many positive sixes do we need to make 54? Well, really, we need to make it opposite, right? So, yeah, I mean, William's right, 
hey, you want that is distracting for me, just FYI. Like, I know it may not distract you, but it, like, you probably don't even realize you're doing it, but my percussion brain, like, wants to, like, lay down a rhythm with the beat you're tapping. <laughs> like, I can't tell you. Sorry. I, I feel like we're at the point in the year where I can be pretty honest with you guys and just say, like, I've got some, like, shortcomings, right? Like, some things that I, you know, I'm not a perfect human, and I get distracted really easily. So when you guys are doing things that are distracting that can mess with, with me, Ah, uh, negative. A lonely negative. Is our answer going to be positive or negative anyway? Negative. negative. How many sixes come out of 54? Or like, yeah, nine. Nine. There we go. I think there's like, always the sixes come out and there's never really any time to get caught and just feel guilty or like having an accident. Is that I feel lonely so maybe it's like a positive thing. The only way you get more comfortable with this is practice. Which you have the rest of class to do. The rest of class time is yours to practice. I don't do this often, so you better not waste this. If you waste this time, it tells me I don't need to do this. If you're all caught up, work on three, two, four, or help someone. Three, two, four. I am caught up. Like, what are you doing to help your teammates? You better not be mad that your class didn't win if you don't ever offer to help your teammates or help them, or uh, or like. Remind them, hey, turn in your homework. 